All right, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to program a simple program and load this uh, S7 1200. As you see right here, we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, this is a going to be a live demo, so we do have everything hooked up. I have a DC, if you want to look real, real quick, my DC and uh, DC inputs. So I have DC inputs right here. I have my power supply coming in. This is the DC power supply, so it's powered by DC. Then the inputs are DC, and then the outputs down below, down below here, are going to be DC as well. So just to show you that, and show you how that system actually works, um, we're going to be going off of this part number that we do have, and I'm going to go ahead and set that aside right now, being that we've already looked at it. And we're going to go ahead and set our process up. So you do see my my current desktop, which I do have uh, TIA portal for 11 through uh, 17 and 18. Um, I'm going to make a, a program for 18 or 17 on this one. Um, now we could go to 18, but we would have to change the revisions and stuff like that. So and I'll explain that in just a minute. So currently, um, what we want to do is we want to make a new project we're going to build this from scratch okay so we're going to call this s um, 7 and then we're going to call it 1200 trainer okay and then the title uh, let's give it an, an author the author is me so I'm going to create at this point so we're creating a new project okay so at this point right now we're just all we're doing is creating a project Similar to what you would do in Rockwell, you're creating the very first instance. Now, what Siemens does is it wants you to configure your device. So it wants you to add a device. So first, we're gonna add a device. As you see, we have no devices in our project right now, so we're gonna hit Add New. So in this instance, it gives you a very good protocol to actually see, right? You can see your controllers, your HMIs, your PCs, your drives. Um, we're going to choose controllers. We do have again an S7 1200 So we're going to use that and we're going to go to CPU, CPU type uh, Right here, which is going to be our CPU currently is a 1214 C So we have a 1214 C and we have the DC Input for that powers the actual processor. We have the second DC is going to be the DC that powers the inputs and the third DC is the DC that powers the outputs so we have a DC 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 system okay uh, which in this case is safer anyway because it's a trainer um, this is the model that I currently have and I'm going to put the version I can change the version if I want but I'm gonna keep that at 4.5 I don't see any reason why to change that keep it as uh, the highest you can keep it at this point in time would be the best route, right? Um, so when it goes onto it, and you can always flash the firmware of this if you need to and do different things. In this case, we're gonna keep it simple. So we're gonna hit add, and this is gonna add this processor into our project. At this point in time, um, again, it's it's basically as simple as Rockwell was, right? except for we didn't add our, our project, or we didn't add our processor separately. Now, I'm not gonna have any protection because this is gonna be a simple training. Um, so what we're gonna do is click no protection. We're gonna click next. Um, this is the PLC security section. So basically the PLC security setup. Um, I'm just saying no, I don't really care. Um, and then right here, I'm, I'm clicking no, I want full access. So I click next. That's the summarization of what I just filled out. I'm gonna click continue or finish. So when I click finish, it's gonna automatically pull up the processor right here. Now I like to double click on my processor and what that does is it brings up my information window down here. And I'll, first I'm gonna go into general. I'm gonna re give it a name. I'm gonna call this S7-1200 and I'm gonna give it me as an author, okay? And then you can look at your catalog information, change firmware. This is where you can you can do a lot of things. I don't currently have any firmware files loaded on this this actual VM, so I'm not going to actually do that. Um, that would defeat the purpose of this video anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Profi bus right here. Um, 
again change our author and then go down to the Ethernet section okay so in the Ethernet section you want to add a subnet okay so we're going to add our subnet and our subnet that we added is PN dash IN that's going to be the Profinet interface to Ethernet um, and then we're going to what we're going to do here is our internet protocol which are internet protocol 4 that's what we're going to be forced to use okay we already have our set so I've, I've preset the processor to 192.168.157 so we're going to change that to 1 and then we're going to change the back octet to uh, 57 and then again at this point you have the Profinet name you can name the Profinet just like this or you can choose right here both um, realistically are going to be the same <clears throat> in our instance so you can time synchronize this stuff um, but for the sake of argument we're not going to do any of this um, we do see our DC inputs our, our, our digital inputs and our digital outputs and on this version we do actually have an analog so we have two analogs now but that's all the setup we really need to do we need to concern ourselves with on this simple scenario that we just did so we have our PLC processor and this is all the network view right so we can see that it's in our network view right here what we want to do down now is go into program blocks and you can see we can come in here and actually program something if we want to but first let's add some PLC tags so I like to go in and just real quick for this qu quick example I'm going to use memory tags I'm not going to use any inputs or outputs because I don't have anything wired so what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, start PB and then it's automatically is going to pull up an address this would be an input or output now different than Rockwell the inputs are input or eyes right the outputs are Q's and then the memory tags are going to be used internally right so we're going to use memory tags in what we're doing so we don't have we're not actually using the physical io that we have so we'll hit stop pb and then it, it automatically assigns the next one down now you can change that if you want to um, but it autom you can change the bit number you can change the address whatever you want to but again for sake of argument what we're doing is very simple we're going to say system system active okay so that's the bit we're going to actually turn on so we have three tags made already okay so good we you know I want you to understand that you have to make your tags and you have to use your tags uh, or you have to make your tags in some kind of tag structure in your tag PL, uh, your PLC tags so that you can actually use them in your program now the main is the main just like it would be inside of a PLC or, or an Allen Bradley computer or a, uh, a Rockwell P, uh, processor this is going to be the main uh, where you actually can do a programming or you can jump to other things right so you can make this really complex if you want to are really simple in this instance for this simple illustration we're going to keep it simple um, and what this is going to do is what we're going to we're going to have in here is we're going to say okay well we don't have any program in here this is the main block it's the uh, it's a ladder so we can choose to ladder all right so each ladder section is going to be a network so you can make it as complex or as simple as possible um, your instruction palette is over here or you have instructions over here as well if you choose to use those now again when it comes down to it we're going to keep it simple and then we're going to throw in our normally open bit and then we're going to click right here throw in a normally closed bit we're going to click over here and drop down okay this is going to make a drop down so we're going to use a seal in circuit and then we're going to click right there and click up again and then in this next instance we're going to click this bar over here now you can drag and drop these two um, it's just a simple but right here you, where you see all the tr uh, uh, basically question marks what we want to do is come in here and pick our tags that we made so this is going to be the start push button 
this one's going to be the stop push button I think you know where I'm headed with this this is going to be system active and we're going to seal in that system active based upon if what the if the start push button is pressed and the stop push button is not pressed it's going to seal in the system active we'll give it a name and we'll call this system control for this network um, we don't have anything in network 2 so we can actually delete it if we want to so let's go ahead and delete that to eliminate confusion so <clears throat> with that what we have in our system right now right we can go ahead and download to the PLC so you can choose to download here or you can choose to download here so I like to first compile my my actual program to make sure that I did everything properly so I compile first to make sure I have no errors if you do not have any errors then it's it's safe to say you can go ahead and proceed as long as you have conductivity we will actually show you how to have conductivity in this process right here um, this again is going to come back and choose the protocol that we're using you're going to choose your interface that you're going to interface with in my computer I'm using the Intel Pro um, so that's my connection and then we're going to connect to the connection that we set, we told the processor it was before which is the PN dash IE underscore one okay so this is that profinet right so what we want to do now is we've told it the conduit to go and search so we want to start the search to see if we have conductivity to our device so if we do have conductivity to our device we will be able to load it so at this point it did find our s1200 we can load it at this point that's going to be uh, it's going to pop up a window you can you can choose uh, trustworthy or no um, I'm going to choose trust because again I I put no protection on what I did it is downloading now to the, the PLC program what I'm going to do is I already had a PLC program in there so I'm going to continue without synchronization and I'm going to stop all modules and then load the PLC program now the only reason it popped up is stop all modules is because again I don't I already had something running now this section is very interesting too because you can change this to what do you want the PLC processor to do when you actually load the program do you want it to no action do you want it to start the, the module I want it to start the module so it, it basically downloaded to the PLC program right now or to the PLC processor right now now you can't see anything because we are we're not online with it so we're going to click go online and then we still have a couple steps with that as well so when we go online you see that everything is green which is a good sign right if we had any amber or orange we would not be in the correct spot so um, in this state what we can do you see we don't have any activity down here so there's two things you can control T to actually start that or you can actually simply go right here and click monitor uh, you have to be in the window that you're in and you can click monitor right here or there is an actual symbol uh, that you can choose to right here monitor on off so you can see that I do not have anything on or off right now now here's the cool thing about these memory tags is you can come over here and modify and set to one and you see as soon as I set that to one if I come over here and set it to zero it's still sealed in the circuit because again it's a simple sealing circuit we didn't do anything complex because we were setting up our very first program how to get online with it how to download it how to work past all that make sure we compiled correctly set up our IP address um, now in this case we're just double checking that our logic works so I'm gonna turn that on so we hit the stop button essentially and then the rung drops out alternatively I can actually come over here and do the same thing here because it is a sealing circuit right now keep in mind if I hit the start button right here again it should seal back in and then stay sealed in now again that's based upon actually doing that now you want to save your project as you you have built it out at this point 
Um, I, I believe we've learned quite a bit in this 15 minute period, um, you know, just getting online, showing how the actual uh, Siemens processor, what type, how to add your type, how to add your network, how to come in and add some simple tags, uh, what the difference is between tags, inputs, outputs, and memory, and then going in and adding a simple section of code. So, and how to monitor it as well. So hopefully you learned a lot from that video. Again, um, I'm not necessarily, again, choosing to be the Siemens expert. I'm just venturing out and doing what other OEMs are doing as far as filling in and bridging the gap because a lot of customers do use Siemens. And when it comes down to it, you have to understand the mechanisms and how things work with Siemens. So it's good to be versatile I am still fluent and still going to be my primary source is Rockwell. Um, but again, some people do need help with Siemens. So that's why we're doing this. And I, when I do something, I produce videos about it because when I find something helpful, I feel like it should be put out there to somebody else in the world will find this helpful. So um, throughout this series, again, I don't plan on being any kind of Siemens expert whatsoever. I just plan on helping those that need help when they're getting started because I look for information everywhere. And again, it's sometimes hard to find things that you need. With that said, hopefully you learned a lot from that video and we'll see you guys on the next one.